Welcome back. This is Dr. Me at the Actuarial Academy, and we are preparing to work a problem involving the normal distribution and the central limit theorem. Here we have an appliance store that has 2,025 shoppers in a given year. Purchases by these shoppers are IID, that stands for independent and identically distributed, with mean 3,125, say, dollars, and standard deviation of 250 and we'd like to determine the approximate 90th percentile of the distribution of the total revenue made for that given year. Now before we can solve this problem we do need to know and understand the central limit theorem. So here, here's a version of the central limit theorem that's needed specifically for this problem. So if we do have n independent independent and identically distributed realizations of from some density f, each with mean mu and variance of sigma squared, then if you were to take those and sum them up, those are approximately normally distributed with mean n times mu and variance n times sigma squared. And this is for n large. And n large generally is regarded as n greater than 30. So what should make sense is if we're taking in observations from a density each with mean mu then the mean of those should just be n times mu and that's exactly what we see here now maybe less intuitive is the variance but it does turn out if they're independent then you can just sum up the variances of each of these and so the variance of this sum is n times sigma squared now what the central limit theorem tells us is that the distribution, because if you understand, this is a random variable, this sum, it's actually normally, approximately normally distributed with the parameters that we just discussed. Now, to solve this problem, we're going to set up some notation and let the random variable r be denoted by the following. So here, r is equal to the sum of x sub i from i is equal to 1 to 2025 and it represents the random quantity of revenue that can be expected for that given year. And this is precisely what we'd like to find the 90th percentile of. So to do so, now we're going to define another variable which is a constant called r prime and we're going to let it denote the 90th percentile of r. So what we're saying here is that 90% of the revenue is going to be less than or equal to r prime which is defined as the 90th percentile of the revenue and we should immediately note that r prime satisfies the following so since r prime is the 90th percentile the probability that our random variable r is less than or equal to this r prime which we're trying to determine should equal to 0 0.9 and of course this is the quantity that we need to find so to this end, we need to do a standardization or a transformation of R, and this is very common in statistics and probability, to subtract off the mean and divide by its standard deviation. And that's what I will write right here. So what we have here is the probability of R minus its mean. We already said that R is distributed with mean in mu and variance n times sigma squared. So here you have to be careful. This is a variance, so to get the standard deviation, we take the square root of n times sigma squared, which is sigma times the square root of n, and that should be less than or equal to r prime minus n times mu divided by sigma times the square root of n. So before we write this quantity out here, let me do a little bit of scratch work right underneath here, if you don't mind. And let's go ahead and compute what n times mu is. Okay, n times mu is equal to, well, n is equal to 2,025. That's the total number of shoppers that come in. And each, on average, spend $3,125. So that's the actual mean of the total revenue, which should make sense. And so that'll be this piece here. And sigma times the square root of n, that's its standard deviation, is going to equal to... 250 times the square root of n. Okay, so that's a little scratch work and a little bit of a description of where these numbers come from. So I'm going to basically transcribe what we have here, right here. And I won't actually work out the arithmetic. I'll leave it in the form as it's given. 
So this is 2025 times 3125, all divided by 250 times the square root of n, which is 2025. And this is still equal to 0 0.90. Now, this piece that I've written up here now, and I'll just do like this little arrow, implies that now this is now distributed as a standard normal random variable because we have standardized it. We subtract it off its mean and divide it by its standard deviation. So we can call this variable or this random variable z is still less than or equal to this quantity here, which I'll just rewrite now. And it's equal to 0 0.90. Now we're going to do a little bit of a leap of faith here and I'm going to assume that you know how to read the standard normal table. And so if you look at the Z table or the standard normal table, the Z score associated with the area under the curve less than zero point less than zero point nine oh is actually equal to one point two eight five. So if you're looking at a Z score here, the Z score associated with this and let's just notate it like this. Z, the Z table is different depending on what book you're looking at. But if you're looking at one where it shows the cumulative area under the curve up to 0 0.90, you can convince yourself that this is approximately 1.285. I actually took the average between two of the Z scores to get that, which implies that this term here, which again I'll rewrite, and I need to extend that over here like that, is actually equal to 1.285. So that's important to, to understand that, which implies that after you do the arithmetic and the smoke clears, not much smoke to clear there, is actually equal to 6,342,581.25. Okay. So at this point, since we had to make some approximations here on the actuarial test, you need to find the answer that's closest to this. And the actual answer that uh, I see on the test here is actually equal to 6,343,000. So just find the closest answer and this is the final answer for this problem. Thank you very much.